This is part one of a four part series covering how to prepare 3D models for multi material or full spectrum color 3D printing on the new Stratasys J750. As I've been learning to use this machine, I've noticed there are about four solid workflows I follow depending on the needs of the part I'm printing. This video series is going to cover each of these four workflows so that you'll be prepared to print any kind of part on your new Stratasys J750. The first workflow we're going to cover is coloring with shells. Coloring with shells is the typical workflow we're used to uh, coming from the Connex line of machines. A shell is also known as a body. So if you're using SolidWorks, we're going to be talking about multi-body parts or assembly files. The file we're going to use or feed into the Polyjet Studio software is an STL file. And we're gonna need one STL per shell or body. And we're gonna import those into an assembly. Colors are then gonna be selected in the Polyjet Studio software. I would choose to use this workflow if I have to print in any sort of transparent or translucent material, if I need to print in a rubber-like material, or also digital ABS. We're gonna be covering this button model and notice in this button model, the uh, green portion has some translucency to it. There's also an, a rubber O-ring. And because of those materials, we're gonna have to use the shell method. Here's the button model inside SolidWorks. Let's take a look at it. We can notice right away we do have colors inside this SOLIDWORKS model, but we will not be using that color data and pulling it into Polyjet Studio. We're going to be using an STL file for the shell method, and all color data is going to be lost. But it is useful to impart the colors on the SOLIDWORKS model because we can just use those RGB values as reference inside Polyjet Studio. I mentioned previously that we will need a separate body or ultimately a separate STL file for every separate color or separate material. Let's take a look at what we have here. We do have multiple bodies. And we can take a look at the exploded view. And I can point out the reasons why we're going to use the shell method. The first reason is this part is going to have some green translucent material that's going to require a shell. And also this rubber gasket's going to require the shell method. Notice this part down here has multiple colors, but it's only a single body. We're gonna to wanna to deal with that before we move forward. One way we might be able to deal with it is to go back to the features that were used to create this geometry and maybe edit these features so that it creates separate bodies instead of merging the bodies. So if I uncheck merge result, on this one prong here, I believe it's patterned. The pattern fails because now we're patterning, patterning bodies. So I'm gonna go ahead and se select the body instead. We're gonna have to do the same thing to this second prong. It's gonna be this boss extrude here. We'll uncheck merge result and we'll fix up our pattern. Edit the feature. Rather than patterning features and faces, we're going to pattern a body. Set the direction and we're good to go. So now that these are separate bodies, we'll be able to get a separate STL file for them. Here's another instance where I wouldn't be able to pull this black data because it's also the same part, part of the same body. I'm not gonna worry about that in this case here. The next step we're going to do is pull this into an assembly. If I were to save out an STL file for this multi-body part, it would result in just a single STL file. I need an STL file for every body. So the trick of, to, for doing that inside SOLIDWORKS is to use the save bodies command. I'm gonna go ahead and auto assign the names, but I'm gonna create an assembly out of this button. 
just throw this on the desktop. Now, when I use save as and choose the STL file from an assembly, it's going to create an STL file for every individual part. And then I'm going to import those STL files as an assembly into Polyjet Studio. So here's the assembly that's created. I'm going to go ahead and save that guy and do a save as. We're going to choose STL. Now, once you choose STL, be sure to check the options button and make sure that you know what units you're saving the STL in. And also make sure you do not have this box checked. Save all components of an assembly in a single file. We do not want that. We want separate files. Okay, so that's going to generate an STL file for every individual body. Now we're going to open up Polyjet Studio. And we're going to insert an, ass an assembly. I'm going to shift select all of my STL files. And it's going to bring them in. So notice I lost all of the color data. It's going to be typical for an STL file. But now what I'm going to have the option of doing is selecting individual bodies and assigning materials. So I have Vero Black, Vero Clear, Vero Cyan, Magenta, White, and Yellow loaded up. I'm going to be able to select a body, input an RGB value. So for this main body, it was a near black. So we'll just say 26, 26, 26. Okay. If I were to have a material uh, that's a rubber-like material, I'll go and select that body and then just select a base material from the list of, of materials I have told Polyjet Studio I have selected. In the case of a part with a translucency, I'm gonna start with an RGB value. So it was a near green, say zero, 192, zero. Okay. And then I'm going to use the opacity slider. Now I'm not sure what opacity I had inside SolidWorks. I'm going to go back to SolidWorks. And I'm going to take a look at the display manager and right click and edit that green appearance. I can see my RGB value zero one ninety two zero. If I activate the advanced tab and go to illumination, I can see the transparent amount was 0.3. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same value in Polyjet Studio. I'm going to select the body and use the opacity slider to slide it down to 30%. I do go ahead and do the same things to these other bodies. So this is a blue. and so on. So to recap, the reason why I'm using the shell method for this particular part is the presence of the tango material, the rubber-like material, and the translucent material. In the following three workflows, we're going to use a file format called VRML, and VRML is going to pull the color data from the 3D modeling tool, but it doesn't carry enough data to know opacity, uh, of a material or, a, or of a body, and it doesn't know to select for a rubber-like material, for example, you know, Shore A60 or whatever you're hoping to choose. So for those reasons, we're gonna be sticking with the shell method on this part. So in the case of the shell method, it's usually pretty cut or dry whether or not you're going to use this workflow. It's not the ideal workflow because it creates a lot of extra files and it forces us to repick colors that we may have already chosen inside SOLIDWORKS. So we're only going to use it if we have to. Be sure to check out the next three videos in this series so that you can tell the difference on when you might choose to use the VRML file and what workflows you might find most efficient depending on the colors of your parts. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.